Good evening, brothers in Christ. Today we are going to study the book of Habakkuk, which is his conversation with God. This is the last prophetic book that we are going to explore in our Kingdom Divided study. Let's pray together. O oh God Almighty, we thank you for the great grace of Jesus, which enables us to come before you and talk to you at any time. Teach us, Lord, so that we may know you better and trust you more, even when we do not understand your mysterious plans. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. When we face hardship and despair, we may be in doubt and need answers from God because we don't know how to rejoice and trust God. Even the prophet Habakkuk himself had many questions for God. However, his conversation with God provided believers with so many valuable lessons. Let's find out the truths in this book with their implications to our lives together. Today's lesson is divided into two parts. Part 1, the mystery of God, and part 2, the sovereignty of God. The key message is, we can trust and rejoice in God's sovereignty even when we do not understand his mysterious ways. Part 1. The Mystery of God Habakkuk questioned the mysteries he observed in Judah and the world around him. He therefore asked God the first question, Why? How long, Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen, or cry out to you, violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Habakkuk's first question can be summarized in this way. Where are you, God? Don't you see what's happening here, Lord? Why does a good God allow evil to exist or even grow? Habakkuk asked sincere questions, realizing that he could rely on God in any situation. This is a good example for believers. When we are in doubt about anything, we can come to him with our questions. He always listens. He will never blame us or ignore our questions. Habakkuk cried out to God, saying, Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore, the law is polarized, and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous, so that justice is perverted. Most scholars believe that the problems that Habakkuk was describing were not from a foreign invader or ruler, but from his own people who were supposed to be following God's law. In this passage, Habakkuk mentioned the righteous who were surrounded by the wicked. These righteous men were made righteous by God because they placed their faith in the God who instructed them in how to live and how to deal with their sin. They stood together in community. In a world full of wickedness, may the Lord use us 
the righteous people living in the community of believers to resist wickedness together. The Lord replied to Habakkuk, saying, Look at the nations and watch, and be utterly amazed, for I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe, even if you were told. I am raising up the Babylonians, that ruthless and impetuous people who sweep across the whole earth to seize dwellings not their own. God was raising up Babylon, which was even worse than Judah, to address the wickedness of Judah. Habakkuk was truly amazed by what God was going to do. However, this passage teaches us that God's sovereign power is often exercised in mysterious ways. The next verses show us the wickedness of Babylon. They were feared and dreaded. They were a law to themselves and promoted their own honor. They had swift and fierce horses and came intent on violence. Their hordes advanced like a desert wind and gathered uh, prisoners like sand. They mocked kings and scoffed at rulers. The Lord concluded his first answer that, Then they sweep past like the wind and go on, guilty people, whose own strength is their God. Even though the Babylonians were God's instrument of judgment on Judah, they themselves could not escape God's judgment on their hearts either. God pronounced them guilty people. God is sovereign and just. We can therefore trust in and rejoice in God's sovereignty even when we do not understand his mysterious ways. God's answer raised more questions for Habakkuk. However, his why questions had begun to turn from why to who. Lord, are you not from everlasting? My God, my Holy One, you will never die. You, Lord, have appointed them to execute judgment. You, my rock, have ordained them to punish. Your eyes are too pure to look on evil. In fact, behind Habakkuk's why question is a who question. Who is God? He therefore paused mid-questioning to praise God, declaring that God was everlasting, holy and just. God was his rock. Habakkuk asked another question in verse 17. Is he to keep on emptying his net, destroying nations without mercy? Habakkuk wondered, would God allow the Babylonians to destroy the nations without controlling them? When we face adversity, we may wonder in a similar way. Will God take over the situation or turn things around for us? After Habakkuk asked God, he actively waited for God's answer. Habakkuk said, I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. Habakkuk's heart was trusting God's timing in answering. 
However, why questions for God are often not answered with what answers? God usually gives us who answers. God replied, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. God gave five truths about himself here. Firstly, God's plan and purpose are certain. He said the revelation awaits an appointed time. It will certainly come and will not delay. Secondly, God is a promise keeper and sovereign over salvation. He gave Judah a promise that the righteous amongst them would not be destroyed because the righteous person would live by his faith or faithfulness. Thirdly, God would judge injustice and violence. He pronounced five coming wars on the Babylonians. God would give justice to Judah. Fourthly, God's judgment is a part of his glory. Through God's judgment, the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Fifthly, God is holy and perfect. The Lord is in his holy temple. No one can say anything to defend himself. All the earth is silent before him. Principle 1. God can be trusted with our questions. What questions have you pondered but never presented to God? What questions have you asked God but never waited to hear his answer? In either case, what is your attitude towards God? Doubt or trust? God knows us and loves us. He knows our deepest needs and our greatest fear. He may not answer our specific questions, but he will always give us more of himself as we listen and wait for him. Part 2. The Sovereignty of God In chapter 3, Habakkuk responded to God with a song out of the silence he held in God's holy presence. Like Habakkuk, while we are waiting for an answer from God and stand before him, we should respond to God with prayer and worship. As we sing and pray, we increase our trust and joy in God's sovereignty even when we do not understand his mysterious ways. The first point in Habakkuk's song is remembering God's sovereignty. He listed what God had done in the past. God came from Taman, the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens and his praise filled the earth. His splendor was like the sunrise. Rays flashed from his hand where his power was hidden. Scholars call this vision of God a theophany. Habakkuk saw God moving from the south to the north, following the route of the Israelites as they fled from Egypt in the Exodus. He saw God's splendor and glory displayed 
in creation like the heavens and the earth. His power was displayed in the lightning rays that emanated from his hand, in pestilence and plague, in the shaking of the nations, in the scattering of the mountains and the sinking of the hills, and in the affliction and trembling of the enemies of the nation of Israel. God's wrath out of his protective, purifying love for his children was expressed here as he came as a warrior. You uncovered your bow, you called for many arrows, you split the earth with rivers. In wrath, you strode through the earth, and in anger, you threatened the nations. Nature responded to what this warrior god was doing. The mountains saw you and writhed. Torrents of water swept by. The deep roared and ripped its waves on high. Sun and moon stood still in the heavens. All of creation except human beings recognized God's power and bowed before it. Why did this wrath-filled, powerful, and glorious warrior came out to deliver his people? You came out to deliver your people to save you are anointed one. God came to rescue a desperate people from an enemy so that his anointed ones might be saved. This is also the salvation God has prepared for us. He came into our lives to rescue us from the enemies of our own sinful heart and set us free. Remembering of God's powerful salvific deeds in the past reminds us that God can do it again. He will keep his promises to rescue and to save. The second point in Habakkuk's song is responding to God's sovereignty. Habakkuk responded with two commitments. The first commitment is to wait patiently for the day of calamity. I heard and my heart pounded. My lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones and my legs trembled. Yet I will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come on the nation invading us. The second commitment is to rejoice and be joyful in the Lord. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, Though there are no sheep in the sheepfold and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. Even in the worst of circumstances, Habakkuk never gave up his commitment to rejoice and be joyful in God. Habakkuk's commitments and promises to God in prayer are the evidence of his faith in God. This is not a burying your head in the sand kind of waiting, but an active waiting. This is not a pretending joy, but a deep abiding joy in God. 
Habakkuk might have wavered at some moments, but he had committed to active waiting on God and to active rejoicing in God. Habakkuk ended his prayer with praise. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. This praise was the overflow of the joy he had taken in, the overflow of the rejoicing in the Lord that he had committed to. Principle 2. God is sufficient for our joy. In this world, everyone experiences hardships. The important thing is how each one responds to his suffering. Some may keep their suffering in their hearts. Some may vent their suffering to those around them. Some may cry and wail and some may rejoice in God. How do you respond to your suffering? Are you still committed to waiting on God and rejoicing in Him? Do you still trust in God because you have found that He is sufficient for your joy? Habakkuk's prayer is a prayer that we can repeat at every stage and phase of life. We boldly bring our questions to God, remembering what He has done in the past, trusting Him to do it again, waiting on His promises, rejoicing in God, and praising Him. Habakkuk's conversation with the Lord progresses from honest doubts to faith. Please remember that we can trust and rejoice in God's sovereignty even when we do not understand His mysterious ways. Let's pray. Our sovereign God, we thank you for the revelation of yourself through the book of Habakkuk. Help us be committed to trusting and rejoicing in your sovereignty always. We would like to praise you with Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 19 that The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Peace be with you all. สวัสดีครับ